Hey everybody, welcome back to Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. I will never get used to saying that, Digital Jewelry Design. Uh, I hope you all had a great summer and all had a bit of a holiday and some time off. And uh, and uh, hope you hope you're back with us and ready to get stuck back into some learning. And uh, before the the July holiday began we had a two stone ring and it was looking like this by the time we we said goodbye and what i'm going to do today is the second part of the tutorial which is finishing out this side with the big stone so that you have a kind of like a free floating stone in uh in the space so let's just have a look where those stones are I don't think I've got them and I think those would be the ones that I had actually here because I moved the ring over to the side um, but just to give you an idea how it would look it really finishes off the ring it really finishes off the ring nicely when the stone is floating and has some light catching it from the bottom um, so i uh, hope you're ready to learn today and uh, let's get started um as you can see uh, there's a whole network of curves that i used to create that 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 particular cutout so if i put this green bit back on again and i just um select those curves you'll see here that there was quite a bit of of surface work uh, curve work and surface work done this is a bit um, intermediate to advanced modeling on the curves uh, it's not lining up exactly here uh, it's because i moved the ring but um, we'll see when we we do it on this ring over here um, okay so let's get started on that so what we have is we have our uh, two stones we have our surface that we've already created and um, I'm just going to go into ghosted viewport mode. And um, uh, what I'd like to do here, what I already started um, at the end of the last tutorial, was let's just go, put everything in focus here. I started by creating this little curve setup, this poly curve. Um, where I have defined in my side view more or less what kind of a cutout I want on the ring. Um, not entirely happy with it yet, so what I'm still going to do is I'm still going to edit it just a tad. Um, for instance, I, I would like it to go with the line of the shank, so I'm going to, to move that down and move this out a bit as well, so it's a bit straighter and uh, not so, um, not so, so not so rounded I like the straight lines and the second thing I'm going to do is I am going to extract the top part from the bottom part but um, and I'm going to create a separate a separate set out of that a separate setting out of that so let's start with that and let's just switch off our stones and um, we can hide these two curves those off and this one down here as well and um, let's go over to our boolean tools and extract surface and we want to make sure it's not a copy we want the original surface extracted and I'm just going to select all of these on top of that side and press enter okay and what we're going to do with that is we're just going to put that into a, a layer of its own I'm just going to create a new layer here. I'm going to call that um, Marquis Top and change the object layer. Okay, switch that off. Okay, now because we use the cutter, what we actually need to do here, what we actually need to do here is we need to to remove this because as you'll see on the other ring, there is no hole on the bottom here. It doesn't go straight through. We did that just as 
to, to, to finish off the ring nicely but what we actually need to do is <clears throat> we need to remove this hole on the inside and how we will best do that is we will just extract these two surfaces delete the ones joined to it and we can fill this hole now you could if if you didn't have the cut through on the edge here like I do you could just go to delete holes and you could literally just close up the hole like that but um, in, in my case um, uh, with the other cutter I cut through it so what I need to do now it's a little bit of uh, troubleshooting is I need to rebuild the surface so um, we're gonna go to our surface tools we're gonna rebuild surface and I'm just gonna rebuild both these surfaces um, there we go uh, before I do that though excuse me I know um, no, no we can do that so we're going to rebuild the surface so it will rebuild the entire surface again but um, you'll see we will clean that quite easily so um, let's put the same amount of points in the U and V um, put the same amount of point counts in U and V and the same degree and we will delete the input but we will not retrim we want it to just look as it does without any holes cut uh, we don't want this trim that's already taken place here we want it clean so there we go there's that how we will uh, best um, cut that out again and uh, if I had to cut that away you'll see it deleted the old surface so now if I had to take our finger ring uh, finger a uh, ring finger size here yeah? could use that um, with a wire cut command so um, I'm going to go to my bullion tools and in my bullion tools I have such a thing as a wire cut so with a wire cut you can select the curve in the view you want to cut in so that's my front view and then I select my surface and here from my perspective view or my top view I can choose which side I want to extrude that wire cut curve out to but we want both sides uh, do both sides and uh, oh, it's giving me some troubles here okay so that didn't work so the next option that I would have is to take the surface that I've got down here the um, let's just take that surface out for a moment this surface over here okay um, let's extract the other one on that side and we are going to join those and we are going to create a boundary curve from that so we can duplicate the border of that and we can delete the one we don't need and here where we have um, so let's just put that off. here where we have the um, the hole on the other side what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, we're going to explode this curve yeah. and we're going to create a blend on this side of here so what we're going to do is go to uh, curve tools and just go for a quick curve blend or, or an adjustable curve blend or whichever you prefer um, but my settings will be kind of standard I'm just going to go with tangency and I'm going to join it okay so now it's joined and we're going to join all these other curves back again so now it's a closed curve so you can delete that inside curve that we don't need okay and if we put our surfaces back on again okay and we select our surface we should be able to do a trim and there we go worked perfectly so there we go so we got that surface back to normal again and the way we do this one um, on the inside will be exactly the same um, only we're going to delete that surface and we're going to create an extrusion 
of the um, of the finger the ring finger size I'm just going to move that in and just center that a little bit inside there and we can explode our cylinder just keep the the inside part of the cylinder and delete the two caps and now what we can do is um, well, first of all, we can join what we've got at the moment in terms of uh, the ring that that's it's not the, the part that's fixed in the old part, and we can trim this inside extrusion with that ring. So let's delete that, let's delete that inside bit, and can flip the surface. And join it up to the rest of the ring and there we go so <clears throat> we've got some pieces of surface not quite sure if that's going to be a problem so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to um, put the ring finger off I'm going to put the surface back on again and I'm going to do a quick check ah that's the problem there we go okay so it's just extract again and this time we're just going to do a split and that should have taken care of that Okay. And it says it's an open poly surface, so let's have a look under our hmm. let's have a look under our tools and, and our analyze tools. So under analyze, analyze is edge tools, you can show edges and ask it to show you naked edges. So you got all edges, naked edges, zoom. And actually the only problem we have here is along the top, which is open. We opened that ourselves. And here's one little gap down here and that we should be able to join using the edge tools, join to naked edges command. And it will ask you for the tolerance okay so now if we zoom it should just be the top so this this is looking good okay so the next thing we're going to do we'll turn that marquee's top back on again okay because it's going to be a bit of a, a marker for us um what we're going to do with that is we want to close it so i'm going to switch the ring off for a moment and i'm going to bring this bottom edge here Uh, down to the same height as the bottom edge of the outside we can do that with a move tool so I'm just going to click on move and put my O snaps on and I'm just going to click on this edge here I'm going to use my shift to uh, create the the the, the to, to, to force it to go straight down in my front view and I'm just going to press tab to keep that and then I'm going to just drop it down so now if we um, join all these surfaces and we try to cap a hole it should work so we cap the hole and there you go worked perfectly okay so next thing we're going to do is we're going to create these two um, setting edges at both tips so we want to remove what's on the left and the right hand side so that the stone is open on both sides so for that i'm just going to take a polyline and i'm just going to well it doesn't have to be a polyline it could also just be a, a a line segment and i want to mirror that through so um we are going to grab both and we're going to use our mirror tool so that's under the move tools go to symmetry uh, 
where are you symmetry there we go and we're going to use the axis of our setting for that symmetry and we can extrude these two surfaces just pull them up and we can create a boolean then just flip that and that one is what we want to get rid of on the two sides so select our setting and a little boolean difference one side ah this boolean difference failed so why is boolean difference failing let us get rid of these little edges with our split tool and join our extrusions let's try that boolean tool again ah let's just try one side voila there we go so actually what we need to do is probably split or um, we need to do an, a boolean split two objects so it kind of like leaves all the parts there so uh, can we delete that the only thing is you're always left with lots of parts afterwards because it keeps all the original parts so there we go so that's what it would come down to finally when you've got the stone it will be held by these two these two points okay and now we can start working on the sides um, so what we got here is we've got this curve and I'm going to project this curve straight through the surface of our ring so I'm going to grab the curve and I'm going to join it and then I'm going to use the pull or project curve um, command and you'll see we have this nice we have this nice curve on the surface now we also have it everywhere else on the ring though because it's like a cookie cutter it literally goes straight through the ring so <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to delete all the other curves that we don't need including those and we're going to work with this one so we can hide that don't need it anymore and uh, um, we're going to do something similar on the other side but we're going to do it by feeling so what we're going to do is we're going to put the maquis top on again because we need that that's going to be kind of our um it's going to be our marker for where curves begin and where they end so uh what i might do at this point is i might decide to hide part of this ring because it's very difficult to see what i'm doing if i have this side here the whole time so what we can do is we can use a cut plan and we're going to put that cut plane on our zero axis straight through the middle of this ring and we're going to boolean separate um, if it's possible because our ring is open so we have one side here we can hide that we have the ring itself that we can delete and we have the other side so that's exactly what i wanted so if i unhide I still have this side over here. So let's hide that. Hide that. And hide that. And we're going to draw the other curves on here using our um, curves on surfaces command. Uh, for this, I for this I usually start off with O snap so that I can uh, I have a I have a marker for my for my object snap, but then I turn O snap off because if your O snap stays on, um, it can do some pretty wild things on your uh, on your on your surfaces and you can't undo that. You have to go back and redo. So I can just switch the O snap off. Maybe we can show. It what can happen it's not too wild a surface but i've had some pretty wild things happen i'm just going to bring that down to the bottom point over here and then we're going to do another one starting from the other side and uh put our snap off and and we 
we're going to bring that one down here as well so we can put those snap on again because we need it to join now sorry i just had a little sip of my coffee now the trick here is that you want to cut out enough at the bottom of the the the, the stone that <clears throat> that the stone isn't impeded on by too much material on the side. So um, while you're working on this cutout, you kind of have to watch what's happening under the stone as well. So what we'll do is we'll start out by trimming the surface with these curves. So let's do that. And we can get rid of those because now it gives us a good idea of what we want to do next year. So what we want is we want something that will kind of come down next to the... Um, next to this 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 surface uh, so what we can do is we can literally create a copy of these curves uh, ah that was kind of stupid of me excuse me I'm gonna go back a second I'm gonna uncut that what we're gonna do is we're going to rebuild these two curves it's just um, or even better I'm gonna use these curves and I'm gonna snap to them To get my line there we go but i see that ah, there you see you see how it can go crazy the the curve okay well it doesn't matter right now but um <clears throat> okay that will be better because it has to come out from the setting so let's split that from the new curve Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to take these two curves and we're going to join them and we're going to create, I'm, I'm literally just going to copy these, copy this in inwards so that it starts from my other point over here on the setting on the top and I'm going to relocate my gumball to that point as well and I'm going to scale from there a bit using my shift tool so that everything stays says stays, stays uh, um, um, uh, proportional and scale it in a bit because we're going to want to build that surface inwards and this is just going to be a marker this curve is, is literally just going to be a marker for us we, we will work on it otherwise because we we want to bring it inwards so if we go and explode this curve now and i take only one side and i'm going to put that point on there so it's stuck on that point as well now i'm going to rebuild this curve using a lot less points like five and i'm going to do the same with the other and now you're going to see we have like very few points here so we can we can select the bottom points here and we can start manipulating them nicely and I'll use all, all of my views for this bring that in bring it up and I can do yes delete some points and bring these points actually now we can leave those points we could almost leave those points there we could leave those points there but that's good it's a nice height if we put our stone on again see where the stone is you you need that material underneath the stone so we could even go a bit lower on that point even go a bit lower on that point here on this side you want to make sure you've still got enough material so okay bring it in bring them in and bring them down and we're going to do the same on this side so trim this and delete that and we're going to follow the same routine here. We're just going to join that, make a copy, 
and put that copy on the inside, relocate the gumball, and bring that curve in. Ah, make sure you've got the right curve when you do that. Relocate gumball. And bring that curve in. And uh, if we do this, let's see what comes of that. Okay, so now I'm going to take that curve and break it and rebuild it. First we're going to put this point on the corner. There we go. And let's rebuild those two curves with five points. And let's take those two points. And what we're eventually going to do is we're going to join those points with um, just wondering. Yeah, we're going to join those two points at the bottom here. Let's again make sure that we've got enough material here. This is about a millimeter and a half, and make that a little bit less radical over there by deleting a couple of points. Okay, let's turn our stone on so we can see if we've got enough material. This this might be too close, so I'm going to move that point down, and the same with this. So with this, I'm also going to bring that point out and down so the stone doesn't get engulfed by material and then the last the last one we have to do is actually while we add it I'm just gonna move that point down a little bit more like that there we go we need to do this in the middle so we could just create an interpolated curve, go from the center and put our O snaps off and follow the same curve line, put our O snap on, bring it together and then just edit it kind of freehand. So we see looks good right okay has to have a the right amount of material thickness uh, should have a good flow um, under the stone I just want to relocate this gumball so that it's world view because that can be a bit confusing if if your points are pointing uh, to the, the, the object What I'm doing right now is basically I'm just creating a little bit of homogeny between these these curves, and it's, it's kind of because I, I I have an idea of what's going to happen when I eventually do create the surfaces between them, and I want to make sure that that's gonna that's gonna look good and that it's gonna work well. So okay, that looks okay. For instance, this one over here. No, that's good. So we do the same on the other side. Switch our snap off. And bring it in. And now we're going to do the same thing. Just going to bring the curve out a bit. And we can do the same for these two. Oh, don't want that. Just want this. Okay. So now what's left to do is create the surfaces. 
which still requires two more curves. Can you guess where? Yes, there and there. So we still need to put two more curves in here. So we'll use interpolated curves for that. And I'm just going to draw one straight from there to there, and now one straight from there to there. And then I'm just going to select my, my points and manually alter them so that I have a little bit of a flow here with the surface. There we go. And the same here. What we're going to need to do here though is we want a little bit more a little bit more meat on the outside here. So I'm going to do this. And this will be a bit more kind of flowing with what's happening on the inside here. So did not. So you don't want to have too little material. Um, but you you have a buildup of material on the sides here, both sides here, quite quickly, which should be good enough. Okay, and I need to move the caps on the bottom of our settings. And now we are going to start doing some uh, rails, uh, sweep rails, and some network. And, and, and no, we won't really use uh, uh, surface from network curves, but we will probably use um, surfaces from two, three, four edges, either patch or um, a sweep, a sweep mostly. So let's start by just duplicating the. Um, hmm, well, let's try. We don't have to duplicate the edges, we can give it a shot without. So make sure that all your curves are singles. So I'm just going to select my curves here so that they're single curves and not poly curves and that way we can be sure that we can do our sweep fairly efficiently so let's go sweep two and okay that's good i'm happy with that i don't even need to add a slash and do the same on the other side. And then we do, do it on the outside, on the inside part. That's a nice surface. Where I can, I use a surface edge. Um, because sometimes it gives you nice access to to tangency and uh, uh, curvature uh, settings but generally if you've set your curves up well enough you don't you don't need that and finally the last one and it is flipped so we'll just flip that surface back there we go. Let's just have a look here now to see how our stone sits in there. We can bring the stone down a bit because what we could also alternatively do is we could bring our surface up if you need more material for the setting. And the stone is sitting quite nicely in there. Um, there will be no need to 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 worry about there being too much material and. Uh, the cutting, the the the, the setter having to to drill out a lot of a lot of gold, and um, at this point we could actually join that all together. Okay, that's great. Can bring in our other side. <clears throat> now you can do one of two things. Um, you can either try bullion it together because as you can see now they're closed surfaces. You can either try bullion them together, which is a fifty fifty. Or you could just re uh, delete the, the surface. Um, um, oh, how does one say? Extract the surfaces in between and then just uh, join the two, surface, the two ring sides together. But let's try a bullion. Sometimes it works. And it worked. 
let's just make sure that there's no surface between them yeah, it worked just fine I like to travel through my objects inside of them sometimes it can be rather rather entertaining um, we've got enough material um, the only thing I would maybe have done here is cut this out a bit broader uh, but let's have a look here that was the cutter that I made for the stone I think I'm kind of quite happy with the way this ring is looking and uh, yeah now would be a good time to render it up and uh, this is where you can play a bit with Rhino Ray Trace so uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope it gave you some insight into into building up parts of of, of jewelry using freeform surfaces uh, kind of using using your feeling rather than um, preset objects or uh, existing surfaces that are there um, that can be a bit daunting sometimes in Rhino because you feel like you're floating a bit in air and you, you, you might not always be able to visualize what you're going to get from the curves but when you start understanding it and, and, and if, you, if you spend some time practicing it it can be a lot of fun so um, so give it a shot don't be afraid um you know the more the more you 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 you're confident of doing something the more exciting your projects can become and uh yeah that stone is sitting in there quite nicely it's floating and uh we will be back very soon now with new tutorials and uh we we hope to see you around have a great day cheers <music>